It's September 5th, 2020. I'm Todd Gunn, and today I am aboard my 1936 wooden powerboat Tortuga, and I'm out in the great harbor of Mount Desert Island, headed toward Great Cranberry Island. Now what I want to do when I get over there is show you uh, how you can go ashore if you come by boat to Great Cranberry Island. It's a little lumpy out here in the western way today. It's blowing just enough to start some white caps, so probably around 15 knots from the south. And I'm heading, or I was heading east, but the uh, swell was rolling me a little. Now I'm heading kind of southeast and taking it more on the bow and getting a better ride. So let's take a look around and see what it looks like out here. Here's the view. To port over toward Mount Desert Island. You can see uh, Friendship Sloop under sail over there. That's Sutton Island. And a little Cranberry Island. And straight ahead is Great Cranberry Island. Sorry for the movement, but the boat is moving in the waves. So I'll come back a little when it calms down and we get over to Great Cranberry Island. It's just going to take about eight or nine minutes. I'm running now at 2,000 RPMs and just about seven knots. Okay, I'm just coming into the lee of Great Cranberry Island, so it's flattened right out. Still a little bit of swell wrapping around. It's rolling me a little. But uh, I'm going to show you what you can do if you come in here and you want to go ashore. There are two options slow right down so we can take a look. The first option is the town dock which is the dock you can see over there and uh, they have a float. Usually they have two floats. Looks like they still do. And we will cruise over by it. Take a look at it. It gets kind of shallow in here, but there is enough depth for pretty much anybody, even at low tide. It's pretty close to high right now, so plenty of depth for my 2 feet 9 inches. Right now, actually, right ahead, you can see one of the ferries that takes people over here which is one way you can get here if you don't have a boat, pretty much the only way, just getting ready to leave. And we'll have to wait and see where he goes, if he's either headed over to Little Cranberry or headed back to Southwest Harbor. We'll know in a second, depending on how much he turns. I'll go inside of him. Okay, right ahead, the town dock. They have floats there you can tie up to for two hours. Now some of the ferries tie up at the end of the town dock so if you come over here you want to tie up and make sure you leave room at the end. Don't protrude past the end so that uh, the ferry can tie up there. And I turn here to get out of this guy's way. It's a little busy in here with moorings and everything. And there's the town dock. On the inside of the town dock is a dinghy dock. And that uh, brings up the second way you can come over here by boat. And that is to come over and pick up a mooring. And out here at the outside of the mooring field the town has got some moorings that are labeled town guest. And those are free moorings. Anybody can pick one up. You can stay overnight if you want. And, uh, but you can, if you want to just go ashore, you can pick up a town guest mooring and take your dinghy into the town dock. And we will cruise out here 
and go past one to show you. That's looking back over toward Mount Desert Island. And when we head back, that's the way I'm going to go, get over closer to MDI and hopefully it'll be a little flatter. Now these town guest moorings are pretty nearly the furthest moorings out. <laughs> One right up here on the where we're headed for right now. So you just come over here, use your boat hook to pick up the mooring pennant, which that little pickup buoy is attached to, and tie off, and you're ready to go. And over there is another one. So there are two here. Now little Cranberry Island which is in the distance over there, over there to the east, also has town guest moorings. It's part of the vil village of Cranberry Islands. And they're free too. As I said, you can stay the night on these moorings if you want. There's Sutton Island. But I'll say that it's not such a good idea to take the ones here at Great Cranberry Island because every boat uh, going over to Little Cranberry Island, coming to Great Cranberry Island, or heading out toward the open Atlantic over there, goes right past you. And there are really a lot of wakes there, and those moorings are consequently very rolly. So we're going to head over toward Northeast Harbor, and then go over and tuck in behind Greening Island to hopefully get out of the worst of the chop. So, I'll stop this for right now. Okay, we're headed toward Mount Desert Island. That's Sutton Island, close in. And in the distance is Mount Desert Island. And where all the masts and boats are is Northeast Harbor. I'm not going to go in there today because I'm a little tight on time. That's Little Cranberry Island. And Great Cranberry is astern. Okay, right straight over there is Southwest Harbor. That's where we're headed, although I'm not going in that direction right now. Right now, I'm headed in behind this closer island, which is Greenings Island. I'm going to go on the north side of Greenings because it should be nice and flat in there. And the boat won't be bouncing around like it is right now. Problem with this boat and uh, sees is if I have to take them on the beam, because of the round bottom, this boat rolls, which I would prefer not to have happen. So anyway, we're just about over to Greening. It's about seven tenths of a mile to get behind it. We're running at about seven knots, so it should take about six minutes. You can see from the boat motion here, it's fairly lumpy. We've got uh, one to two foot seas right now. You look out that way. We got a sailboat coming. And once I tuck in behind greening, it's going to flatten right out, which will be very pleasant. A rolling like this doesn't really hurt the boat, it's just rolling, but uh, it is uncomfortable. <laughs> which is why I'm trying to avoid it. If I was headed straight to Southwest Harbor, I'd be taking these seas on the beam, and we would be rolling a lot more. Uh, this sailboat that's passing going the other way right now is an International One design, a late 30s vintage uh, wooden sailboat. There are a bunch of them here that race. Okay, we're just about to tuck in behind Greening Island into its lee. And these seas should almost completely go away. We'll still get a few waves coming from astern as wraparound waves refracting off the point of the island. But starting to flatten out already. There's the eastern tip of Greening Island. And we're heading kind of west-northwest right now. We 
screws in here and get out of the chop. The reason it's choppy where we were is that there's basically unlimited fish out into the Atlantic Ocean. Okay, we're in the glee of greening now, and except for a few wraparound swells, we're pretty much out of the chop. Much more pleasant running, and I've slowed down uh, because of that, down to about 5.6 knots from 7 knots. And we're going to head up past Greening Island and then go back into Southwest Harbor from the north. Right now, we're headed over toward Fernald Cove and the entrance to Soam Sound, which I'll show you in a minute or two when we get over there a little further. Well, we're headed past the north side of Greening Island now. You can see a couple big yachts anchored over here. They've been here for a few days. I don't know uh, anything about them other than they're big. And we'll go over here and look out the starboard side. And you can see the entrance to some sound. West end of Greening. Uh, when we get past it a little bit, I'm going to turn south and head between Greening Island and Clark Point, which is the land on the other side, into Southwest Harbor proper. The only tricky part about making this turn is we have to briefly go directly into the sun. There is lobster gear here, so it can be pretty nearly invisible when you're running directly into the sun. I definitely do not want to snag any. So I'm looking. I think I'm okay to make my turn. There we go. And now I can see the lobster gear again. You can probably see it up there too on the port bow. Lobster gear can make uh, motoring in Maine kind of interesting. For example, here's the lobster float. They all have a line attached to them, and if you run over one of those, there's a good chance you're going to wrap that line around your prop. And if you watch boats running through a channel or a narrow passage like this, you'll often see them sort of zigzagging to miss the lobster gear. Fortunately, my sailboat doesn't really snag lobster gear, so most of the time I can pretty much ignore it in the sailboat, but not in this boat. I have to keep a sharp eye out so that uh, I don't inadvertently uh, run over a lobster pot float. And unfortunately, sometimes, if there's a lot of current, they can actually be towed under and be down there 10 or 12 inches below the surface and you can't see them. And uh, the only kind of time I've ever snagged one on this boat was one that was towed under. So that was a particularly tough one to get off because the uh, current acting on the boat put a big load on the line and it was really hard to pull it up to where I could do anything with it. Anyway, we're just coming back into Southwest Harbor right now and so we'll be heading into the harbor and going over to the marina to tie up. One thing you really have to watch coming into a harbor like this is traffic. For example, there is a power boat that was overtaking me a minute ago. And uh, I turned to stay further from him. And we look out toward the entrance to the harbor to the east. And I don't see anybody coming in. So we just have to watch out for anybody coming out of the harbor. This harbor is pretty much east-west, so there are times in the year when coming into this harbor is straight into the sun. Fortunately, not so much today, especially if I head pretty far south before I make my turn then I won't be directly into the sun except for briefly during my turn. 
right now. And going directly into the sun, as I said before, is an issue because you cannot see the lobster gear. And you definitely want to avoid it. So I'm going to stop until we get a little closer to the marina. Okay, we're approaching the marina now, right over there. I have to go around the end boat and loop into my slip. The only issue I've got right now is there are two inflatables following me and I'm hoping they don't cut in between me and the marina. So I gotta be a little busy so I'll wait till we get tied up. Okay, here's my slip straight ahead. My slip neighbor is not there which makes it a lot easier to come in. The wind is gonna blow me down a little so I'm gonna come in kind of in the middle of the slip and let it do that. It's pretty easy. I will need both hands though so I've got to put the camera down. Hey, I'm back at the dock, everything's shut down, and uh, hope you enjoyed the ride across the Great Harbor of Mount Desert Island from Southwest Harbor over to Great Cranberry Island, and then back via the north side of Greening Island on a rather breezy and rather choppy day out there in the Great Harbor. If you did, please give me a thumbs up, and uh, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and click that notification bell so you will find out when my next video is posted. Thanks for watching.